Hi, my name is Justin Buller with Tulsa Welding School, and today I'm going to be demonstrating a 2G 2-inch two TIG all the way using ER70S6 wire. Uh, the goal is today is to show y'all how to successfully get around a 2-inch two 2-inch um, coupon. Okay, guys, I normally like to clean about a half inch, half inch back on both sides. I like to clean about a half inch on the inside. I also like to clean the uh, bevel. But well, what I use, I, I use a, a four and a half by quarter inch grind disc on the outside, and I use a cone rock on the inside. Uh, I like to clean the bevel wool with my grinding disc and come back and buff it back uh, and, and buff it. Reason why I buff it, I like to um, get down a nice shiny white material, white metal. Uh, that's when you know it's clean. The reason why you want to get the reason why you want to get this clean, guys, because you're trying to get all the rust, all the mill scale, any debris on your on your internal and external pipe. Okay. Reason why TIG does not penetrate rust. It has to be super uh, super clean. Okay. Once you get your material prepped, next thing you do, you got to make your fit. Today I'm using a 532 gap, and I'm and I'm going to take my and I'm going to put my pipe in this spacer right here. This spacer is nothing but a flat bar with a piece of angle iron. All right, next thing I do, I'm going to slide my spacer in, push it close. Then I'm going to pull my spacer back out. I'm going to check my I'm going to check my fit at the top. There we go, guys. Got a 532 gap, no landing. We're gonna put about a half inch tack on here. We're gonna go from here to here, okay? So we want a half inch tack, because I don't want that pipe to, to, to draw. Because a lot of times, guys, when you whenever you put a, a big tack on here, the bottom is the bottom side is gonna pull like this. So, and it's gonna make it also gonna make it harder to, to pull it back. So I like a half inch tack on the front, I mean on the top right here, I'm gonna roll it around, I'm gonna put a half inch tack on the back side. All right guys, now we're ready to tack. The first thing I wanna show you is, is how to tack, okay? It's how to far to, to put your tack. So what I do, first thing I do, I take my torch, I'm gonna wrap my hand around just like this. The reason why, because I'm trying to get the weight off the torch. So I like to wrap my hand around my torch like this. I'm gonna come in here. The first thing I'm gonna do, guys, I'm gonna strike it up, strike on this bevel. I'm gonna strike it up on this bevel, and I'm gonna preheat these two bevels. Once I get preheated, I'm gonna put my rod halfway in, halfway out. That means the rod, that means I'm taking that rod and I'm cutting that rod half in two. So half the rod is gonna be on the inside, half the rod is gonna be on the outside. So once I strike my arc, I'm gonna heat both sides up, then I'm gonna add my wire. I'm gonna add my wire right here on the leading edge. And I'm, gonna, and I'm always going to keep my torch pointing straight down. You don't want to have your torch at an angle like this. What it's going to do is it's going to heat up the end of the rod and it's going to ball up. And you got a good chance of falling out. So I like my, um, my torch parallel. And I'm just going to go side to side. Keep my rod halfway in, halfway out. And my movement's going to be side to side, bevel to bevel. Another thing, guys, is very important is your tungsten stick out. See, right now I got about a half inch stick out. You don't you don't want your your tungsten way out here like this. You don't want your tungsten up and uh, up inside your torch like this either. You want about a half inch out. I have my tungsten right about there. All right, guys. Now I'm gonna check my fit one more time, and I'm gonna slide it a little closer. I got my 532 gap. All right, guys, here we go. Heat it up. Dab a little bit over here. Dab a little bit over there. Bring it over here. And we'll go side to side. Keeping that rod halfway in, halfway out. Make sure you push on the wire. Because if you notice, like right here, that keyhole got a little bit bigger. So what I did to, to keep it falling out is I pushed a little more wire in there, a little more wire into my puddle. After we make our first tack, we're going to inspect it, okay? Well, I like to use a flashlight for my inspection. So what I'm gonna do, guys, 
and I'm gonna shine my flashlight down inside my pipe to make sure I got a good tack. You don't want your tack no, be, be no more than an eighth of an inch. Right now this tack, uh, it's about eight, it's about a 30 second above flush on the inside. You don't, what I mean by eighth of an inch, you don't want an eighth of an inch reinforcement, okay? So now, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna check my, my fit up, is I'm gonna use my 532 welding rod again. I'm gonna check my top, and I'm gonna check my sides. They're a little bit on the wide side, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take my hand, I'm gonna push on both ends just to get the spread. That seems pretty, pretty close. So now I got the gap that I like, okay? Now I got the gap that I like. My rod is sliding through, and I'm now I'm able to put my second tack in, okay? Remember, on your second tack, guys, you want a half inch tack. What I like to do, I like to put my second tack in, and then check my sides. Because I, I, I don't want one side wider than the other, I don't want one side tighter than the other. So once I get my second tack in, I'm gonna check my side to side. All right, that should be good. They are going to tighten up a little bit, but once you get your second, once you get that tack in there, uh, a lot of times they will, a lot of times they'll draw it up closer. Right now I'm gonna put in a little bit of, a little bit of heat in this side. Why well, it's very important that you make sure that you heat up both bevels before you start adding, adding wire. Another thing, if you notice right here, I popped off to the side. I, what I was trying to do, I was trying to get the fish eye out. I was trying to pull the fish eye to the side, and right here I pulled it right here on the bevel. You never want to leave the fish eye in the middle. You always want to pull the fish eye up on your bevel, then terminate your well. So now what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to check the uh, spacing. On this side, it's, it's just a little bit wider. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to Give it a tap. Uh, yeah, those are pretty close. That one's all right. That one's a little tight. So what I'm gonna do is gonna give it another little whack. Shake it again. I can work with that, guys. Another thing I forgot to mention earlier, you see on the end of this rod, that's oxidation. You want to remove that before you start. So I, I, what I use, I use a pair of clippers or a pair of clients. I'm going to cut the end of that rod off where it's nice and clean. Make sure every time that you are using a, a TIG wire that you're clipping the ends, okay? All right, once we get it tacked up, I'm going to take my arm and I'm going to raise it up. I like it around eye level. Uh, I know when you're out in the field, sometimes it ain't always going to be perfect. It ain't always going to be eye level, but when you're in a welding booth try to be, and you're just getting started, try to be comfortable as possible. Now what I'm going to start on, guys, is I'm going to feather my end of my tacks out. I'm going to start feathering this one, then I'm going to feather this one. Uh, this, oh, this one, I'm going I'm to uh, feather the ends, and I'm going to thin out the center, okay? You want the ends to be thin, uh, you want to thin out the end of your weld, because when you come up to it, you want to be able to consume that tack or that tie-in, okay? It's very important you get a good tie-in on your on your tacks. It's very good, it's very important you get a good tie-in all the way around, okay? So you have to thin out your you have to thin out your tacks. Every time you stop or restart, you have to grind out your tacks, okay? All right, here we go. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna thin the center out. Just grind it just a little bit so it's shiny. And on the end. I'm gonna just stand it out just, as, just enough for I can tie into it. Now 
once you got your tacks feathered, the first thing you want to do, you want to adjust your machine, okay? Right now, right now I'm running about 80 amps. And we got it on gas tungsten arc welding. What a, a technique I like to use, guys, I like to use a back feed technique. Um, a lot of times, I actually will feed through the bevel, okay? Um, how I keep from losing my wire before I start, I'm gonna poke my wire through right here and pull it back. Then I'm gonna strike my arc, come back, heat up, boom, add my rod. But when I add my rod, I'm gonna add it on the high side, okay? What I mean by that is I'm gonna add it to the upper bevel. Sometimes when that gap is a little wide, what you can do, you can wiggle that rod just slightly back and forth to get that rod, I mean, to get that puddle to tie into both bevels, okay? My torch angle, my, my angle is gonna be uh, parallel. It's gonna be straight. I'm gonna keep my torch straight. I'm gonna keep my rod about a 45 degree angle. But I'm also gonna keep the feeding that rod at the, feeding that rod to the top of the bevel. I'm gonna go all the way around. The other thing, guys, I've seen this a lot. Whenever got whatever everybody first starts off, they kind of uh, they, they everybody wants to feed it too far down. You want to go from bevel to bevel. So you you're taking it from here to here, not here to here. If if you're doing that, you're overfilling your root. You got to keep everything between the bevels, okay? And my movement is just like this, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. All right, guys, another technique I use a lot, uh, a, a lot, especially when I used to work out in the field, is I use a uh, looking through the gap technique. What I mean by that is I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put my eyes through the gap, I'm gonna look through the gap, and I'm gonna look at the backside of that rod. And when I come around right here, I'm gonna move my head this way. And I'm always looking to the inside. Back, forth, back, forth. And right about here, I'm gonna be, my head's gonna be right here looking at the back of the puddle. And I'm watching that rod. I'm watching the puddle. I'm paying more attention to where the rod is at than the, the, where my tungsten's at. Wherever my tungsten going, my rod's gonna come with it. So I'm trying to keep the rod on the front of the puddle because the reason why, because I don't want cold wire. That's the reason why I like to feed through the back of the gap because I know I'm putting that rod on the front of that puddle. I know I'm not gonna leave cold wire behind. A lot of times when, when, you, when you feed it this way, guys, that you will get that, you get that rod too far behind the puddle and you actually leave cold wire. So I'm gonna keep the rod on front of the puddle. I'm gonna keep it on the upper bevel and I'm gonna go back and forth, side to side. All right guys, here we go. We'll strike an arc. We're gonna heat it up. Once I see it, once I see the end of the weld, once I see it keyhole, I'm gonna start feeding. And you always gotta push. And I'm keeping the rod on the upper bevel. Going back and forth, back and forth. Now I'm gonna come around here, keep the rod in front of the puddle, keep the rod on the, uh, the upper bevel, and go side to side. Now if it keyholes too much, there's a couple things you can do. First thing I like to do is I like to push a little bit more metal in. I like to give it just a little wiggle like this, okay? Now I'm gonna back my rod up, reposition. I'm gonna come back, put it side to side. Then I get to my tie-in, what I like to do, this is something I do. I'll go back over my tie-in, back and forth. What I'm doing is soaking that tie-in in. You know, just pop off right here on the edge. I'm getting the key, I'm getting the fish eye, pull the fish eye on, on the edge of the bevel. Do you do that? I like to go about a half inch back, beat the back up, start that and rod. Uh, the keel is getting a little wide. 
Before I make my tie-in, I like to thin out my restart. So I'm gonna thin out my restart over here, and I'm gonna thin my, my restart right here. I like to grind about a half inch back, because I, whenever I make my tie-in, I walk it forward a half inch back, then I walk it backwards to assume my restart. All right. You watch it, you see if you can assume. When the feet can assume like that and tie-in, that's when you know you have enough. We grind it enough to make we grind it enough to tie everything back in together. And when I make my tie in, I'm almost doing a lay wire technique. But it's still considered a back feed because what I'm doing is I'm just keeping the wire halfway in, halfway out. Now what I'm doing guys is I'm making sure I got a good tie in. And we're going to pop up to the side. Now we got our root made. Next thing we got to do, we got to wire wheel the root, okay? Reason why? Because we are trying to remove the contaminants, any contaminants in that weld, okay? What I mean by that is silicon deposit. Silicon deposit is a coating on your TIG wire. The first thing you want to do is you want to is you want to wire wheel all the way around it and you want to check it, okay? Inspect your weld before you start, okay? Also, guys, make sure you inspect your weld. If you have any high spots, any bumps, you gotta remove it before you before you put your hot pass in. Those high spots will not melt out. You gotta you gotta take your grinder and manually remove them. Okay. I like to use a thin disc, which is a four and a half by three thirty two. It's a thin cutting disc. So if I have any high spots in there, I'm gonna take this thin disc and I'm just gonna go back and forth to smooth it out. I don't like a thicker disc for one reason, because the thicker disc, it will open up the bevels and widen the bevels wider. Okay. The goal is not to widen these bevels, okay? You do not wanna widen these bevels. You wanna leave them the same, because the reason why, you wanna put a straight cap on your pipe. So now, once we buffed out our hot our root pass, now we're going to hot pass. I like to hot pass around 115 amps. And another little thing I want to show y'all real quick, a lot of guys get confused with the hot pass. They like to put their torch straight in. They, that they really don't put an angle to it. Luckily enough, I'm using a flex head, so I'm going to just flex my torch up. Uh, and when I walk the cup, I like to keep that, that torch pointed up. So I'm gonna come back, forward, back, forward, back, forward. Walk in the cup, guys, to me, it's, it's, it's when you first start off, um, it's a lot like rolling a burl. When you roll a burl back and forth, the movement is, is pretty similar. How I learned years ago, um, I learned by walking a cup on a, on a mason jar. That's how I learned how to get, that's how I learned how to walk the cup almost 20 years ago when I first got into this industry. Um, the biggest thing with walking the cup, guys, I notice is guys get stiff, okay? You want nice fluid movements. You don't want to be stiff. You want to be nice fluid movements. You want to walk the cup back, forward, back, forward, back forward okay and you want to keep that torch pointing up okay you don't want the torch pointing down you want to keep the torch pointing up and also you want the filler wire to be up okay you don't want the filler wire down low you don't want it in the middle you want to kind of keep it high on the puddle okay so 
I'm going to fire up. I'm going to walk it back and forth. Let it heat up. Then I'm going to add my rod. Nice fluid movements. I'm also uh, laying that torch just a little, uh, laying the torch back, okay? And I'm keeping my rod up high. And I'm going back and forth. Make sure when you make sure when you're doing your high pass that you're getting these toes, toe your bead to wash out, okay? A high pass is designed to remove any kind of uh, in, in, any kind of defects with your root, which this one really didn't have any, but that's what is that's what a hot pass is designed for. Remember, don't try to go outside your bevels either. Right now, I'm just going from bevel edge to bevel edge, and I'm gonna try to carry this one all the way around if I can, back and forth. Nice fluid movements. You want to make sure that puddle is hitting each wall. Make sure it's tying on both sides. Let me get over here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna terminate the weld. Oh, wait a minute. There we go. Okay, a little further. Just about a half inch past. All right, guys. Once you get your hot pass in, the next thing you want to do is you want to buff and clean out your weld, okay? So I'm going to start from this side. I'm going to clean it all the way around. I'm going to do my inspection on it, too. After that, we're going to run our fill pass about 110 amps. And we're going to use the same method, okay? We're going to keep the rod up high, and we're going to wash the puddle down back and forward. We're going to walk the cup out, okay? Once I get once I get it flushed out, then we're going to cap it. No, no little tip, guys. Once you get it flushed out, let it cool down before you cap it, okay? If not, a lot of times you'll get uh, undercut. The bead will be kind of sagging. you got to let it cool down after you put your fill pass in. Make sure you heat it up, then you start adding rod. Because if you if you don't, what's going to happen is it's going to ball up, and it's going to ball up and leave a big old ball there. You got to make sure you heat both sides up. And right now I'm filling it up. I'm putting my fill pass in. I'm going from bevel to bevel. Now, I like a dome-shaped cap, guys, so I'm, uh, I like to have it flush before I cap. I, I even like it just a little bit over flush. All right, guys, now I'm ready for my cap. If you notice, I'm nice and flushed out. 
the bead is nice and flat, it's not humpy. So we're now we're ready for our cap. We're gonna put a two bead cap, I'm gonna, and I'm using ER70S 1 8, okay? Now, I'm gonna cap it from here, the toe of my bead, to just above center. I want just me, I want just about a, a 30 second of an inch between edge of my bead and top of my bevel, okay? So I'm gonna go from here to here. When I'm putting, when I'm running my, my cap, I'm watching what I'm laying down. I'm not watching what's in front of the puddle, I'm watching what I'm laying down. Reason why? Because I want to make sure I'm hitting that same spot every time. So when I'm welding, I'm not watching from a puddle, I'm watching from behind. Bring it up, bring it up, bring it back, let it heat up. Never, like I said earlier, never add rod into a cold puddle. And bring it down, make sure you're hitting that toe. That's why it's very important, guys, to, to watch what you're laying down. Because if you're not watching what you're laying down, you never gonna get that bead to be straight. You never gonna get an even cap either. So I'm keeping the rod in the middle, about halfway in the middle, and coming up, coming down. Bring it down, tight the shoulder. Heat it up. And guys, you notice I went, went a little further back on my, on my restart. The reason why, because I don't want that cap to be low with uh, uh, my tie-in. So I went a little further back. Make sure I didn't have a low cap. I'm gonna walk, come up, down, up, down, up, down. Guys, now I'm gonna I'm put my final cap. I'm gonna go from to uh, I'm gonna go from the shoulder to about halfway center, okay? And I'm gonna keep my rod right here at the right here on the toe. And I'm gonna go from from the toe to the center. And I'm gonna use a 1/8 ER70S six wire also. So the very the, the cap is very important. You get the cap very, uh, nice and straight and nice and, and good looking. Okay, because whenever you whenever you're uh, going for a job, that's the first thing they're going to look at the cap and the root. Those two things have to be right. I mean, the very important you get the cap and the root right. It's also very important you keep a straight cap. Like I said earlier, you want to use a you, you want to use a, that bevel edge as a guideline. So you want to use that bevel edge as a guideline, and you're going to go from, from edge to center.
right, fellas, this is my two inch uh, TIG all the way using ER70S6. If you liked, uh, if you liked this video, please f uh, share and subscribe and leave us comments down below if you have something you'd like to see from us. I'm Justin Buller from Tulsa Welding School and y'all have a good day. Peace out.